Kilda. You may remember me. I was a pro rugby player for 16 years and played 71 tests for the All Blacks. I love rugby, but at the heart of it, I'm just a Māori boy who loves Aotearoa and the outdoors. Woo! Good play in the air. I could catch that one. We're sport for choice, really. <laughs> Diving, hunting, fishing, and foraging about the place. Oh. It's me. Yeah, oh, that's ball. Look at the size of it. In this series, I'll take you on the road as we meet hearty local characters, <laughs> create some history for my mokopono to inherit. Will guide me through what they do best in some of the most beautiful parts of Aotearoa. You already exceeded my expectations. <laughs> this is Pretty Sticky Tour. It's an action-packed episode this week. I'm dividing my time between Masterton and Martinborough at the bottom of the North Island. I learned a couple of ways to catch eels. Jesus! Go on a deer hunt. Let her know you're there, talk to her. And even break in a horse. Mm -hmm. And after all that hard work, I took it to some kai. Oh, is that right? <laughs> a lot of kai. Just sort of making our way into uh, Masterton. Go catch up with our mate, Mare Paku. Hopefully, uh, he can show me how to catch some eels. Masterton is the largest town in the Wairarapa, about an hour and a half northeast of Wally. He kai wa pai tō Paku i waho atu i te taone. Ko noho ia ki konei mo te nuinga o tōna oranga. Kia ora, Puri. Kia ora. How's things? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Righto, yeah. we're here to come uh, check out some uh, tuna. Some tuna? Yeah. Well, you come to the right place, guys. Righto. That way? Right. Well, I'm uh, Matt Paku. I'm from Wairarapa, from the coast. This property here I brought 30 years ago. We come out and we looked at this place and the first thing that got us was this beautiful spring-fed creek here. Basically, this is my marae, for my kids and my moko. So, you know, I couldn't ask for a better place. This stream here runs through most of Masterton. This is all spring water here. It comes across some 10, 15 k's from the Tauruas underground. Beautiful water. Predominantly eels like calm water, not running water, is that true? The long fin, our big eel, these big tuna in here, are the ones that love the current. You don't see them normally in the dams. But the short fin, that's the one that sits up in the dam. There are two main species of eel, or tuna, in New Zealand. The short fin eel is the smaller of the two and can be found throughout the South Pacific in dams and lakes. The long fin is common to Aotearoa and has historically been an important food source to Māori. Unfortunately, due to commercial fishing in the 70s and 80s, they are now a threatened species and sustainability systems are in place to keep their numbers up. When they talk about the long fin in the, in, in the creek getting wiped out, I was part of that. And so was you know, hundreds of other eel fishermen. I kiti a tuatahi tia e me paku te mimiti haere tanga o ngā tuna i ona mahi hi ika. We started off with five nets and we were catching between 400 and 500 kilos a day out of five nets. When I finished, couldn't get 400 kilos a day in 100 nets. So that sort of turned the light on for me to say, hey, we've done a lot of damage here. So the species, through just um, knowledge and knowing about them now, we can save the buggers. Here we are, bro. Well, is this the spot, is it? Just hit the uh, hinaki up. Spot down in there. Hit that down there and I'll come down. Get out there, Rosie. Get out, Rosie. So when we're putting this? Yeah, throw that weight over the back of that root there, just that bolt white there. Over there? Yeah. What's this part for? Oh, what this does is, this do? This is just the old um, sorting race they come up. When those tuna come up either side, they're going to swim either side of that fin, and hopefully they go in there. Yeah. And the process was pretty easy. Having a weight at the back, chugging it in the deep end, and then basically opening up the front uh, so that the eels can basically swim straight into it. What's the uh, strike rate uh, for uh, getting them in here? As long as nobody's been here last night or in the last week or so, I would say 10, 20 eels in here tonight, just in this little stream here. Ko te hinaki, ko hoki mai anō mātou hei aopopo, ka kite he aha kei roto. Look pretty easy, not having to tie anything down, so we'll wait and see what the outcome is. In the meantime, Matt's going to show me another method for catching tuna that he teaches his mokopuna. OK, this is where we get, get our fishing lines from, bro. You get a nice, solid piece. I try and keep them short, so when they, as soon as they lift their arm up, that eels come out and they just flick them on the, 
on the bank. We're going to try and catch some tuna with a, a bit of harakiki. What end do we put in the water? This piece here. So we actually want to tie our, our bait in here. Tie a bit of a slip knot on there. Like that? Yeah. Pull that tight. That should just move up and down. You got it? Yeah. I wouldn't be catching anything if you didn't bloody help me. Well, there's always to dive in and grab it by hand. <laughs> I'll leave that one for you, eh? Yeah. And then we put the... Put the meat in there. Throw it on the water. You better make sure this is foolproof, otherwise we'll be here forever. <laughs> oh, well, as I say, you should always go diving for one. <laughs> <laughs> we get a bit of meat here. Just wrap it around there a couple of times and then pull that knot up. I think he's got a uh, bit of bacon that he's uh, pulled out of the fridge and some uh, garlic lamb, he reckons. You could have told me you had bacon and eggs, huh? Would have come earlier. Just hang that water kicker just on the edge of that current there. Just let it sink down as much as you can and we might get some visitors here. Can't see anyone moving? No. Eventually the tuna get a whiff of what I've got on offer. Just let them have it for a while. Let them have a little spin up cuz and then flick them straight up on here. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Damn it! I wasn't too good at catching it with the, with the bacon anyway. I could okay. feel the up. eels biting into it. And he said Ooh. once it goes missing, you can flick it up on the bank. Tried that and obviously come back with nothing but the bait. Yeah. Oh! Fetch an egg! <laughs> yeah, it was pretty uh, average actually. Wasn't <laughs> too good at it. Yeah, I can met kote mo ni te he. Engari kei ai a te hua. Now I think we'll go and get um, a bit of hua. Power hua is the gut off the uh, power. These things love it. Well, how about you do it first so I can watch, <laughs> and then we'll see if I can catch one myself. All right. Uh, yeah, I think yours is looking a bit like a cowboy's lasso. <laughs> they might be shying off there. Are oh, we not trying to lasso them? Well, we should be, because we might have more luck. <laughs> well, we might as well go and get some hooey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's a very valuable piece of the power. I think we're spoilt because we just eat that black piece of meat. But actually, the goodness is in that hua now. We're just going to put a little bit of that in the gauze and that just helps us retain that bait because it's nice and soft, this hua. Yeah. This here, you should be able to catch half a dozen eels on this one bait. We're not going to need that much for a koi, are we? Well, I eat three. By yourself? Look, looking at you, you would do with a half a dozen. Yeah. Would she? <laughs> in the same spot? Same spot, man. I can tell instantly the hua has made a difference. The eels are swarming in. Kare roa ka ngau tētahi. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good Jesus! He piki whara hoki. <laughs> I don't think the eel ever knew that they could fly, but when he pulled it out of the water, that one did. Oh, not that one. It's got a... Ko te tūmanako ka hopu a noau i tētahi. When the eel bites its prey, it will often lock on and spin rapidly around its axis to try and tear off a piece of flesh. This is the best time to pull out the harakiki. Yeah. The old death roll. Oh, bit of sushi that one, bro. Took me a few uh, attempts and I uh, was pretty bad at the start, but got it right at the end. That's enough for now. Matt reckons it's time to give back, so we dump the rest of the hua to give the tuna a feed. They love it. It's like bloody Christmas for these fellas. They didn't think that there was that many tuna around here. They basically come out of the woodworks and decided to come have a, have a bit of a hākari. Ka waiho e nei tāne ki a mutu ia rātou kai i te mea hei a pōpō. It's on. We take a look at our hinaki, prep some eels for the smoker, and then I head over to Martinborough to have a hunt for some veni with some old rugby mates. <laughs> Don't go away. I'm in Masterton, about 100 k's northeast of our capital. Yesterday, Matt Paku and I set up a hinaki in this creek, and it's time to check out what we've got. It looks like there's a couple of tuna in there. Iau e kite ana, ki te ki haere te hinaki. Ooh, yes, yeah, it's pretty heavy. Beautiful. Yep. Well, enough for a kai. So, yeah, it's a pretty good uh, catch in the old hinaki. 
We ended up catching about 30 eels, I suppose, maybe about 25 kgs all up. He'll be sick of eating eels by the time I finish with him. Off to the smokehouse, eh? Oh, dear. We're not going to starve. What, up the bank or...? <laughs> the next step is to kill and fillet the eels for the smoker. Matt's got a special area just for this purpose. Oh. Get rid of the old uh, putter off them. Just baby powder, eh? The slime must be removed before the eel can be prepared. So all you've got to remember is that they've lost their slime, not their teeth. I know that. Right, well, they put it. Here we go. Put the old dissect in them now, take that bone out of them. You find that backbone just in there. The tuna has got a straight bone from its kumu here. Yeah. Down there, it's just a flat bone. When it goes up here, well, it breaks into three like a normal fish have. Open that up. I might have to go and buy me some of those knives. They look like butter knives to me, but they were the old school ones. Basically, because uh, they have a bit more flexibility in them. That's one side. Cut off the old uh, blood piece in here. Cat loves that piece, that's why he's here. Yeah, he's pull that bloodline out there. Pull that gut up there. Cut back down that bone on this side. Flip them over. And follow that back up the, the backbone. And you read that bone. Pull them out there. There's the old mouth organ, that's where we smoke that. That's the first thing to come out of the smokehouse because it cooks quick, the old bone. Take the head off, and I take that over to um, to the cousin next door, to my feed of fish heads. So nothing goes to waste. Nothing goes to waste here. That's it. We just roll them up like that. Stack them there. Just do a couple more, and then we've got to brine them. Here's your first victim. <laughs> I just go down to that bone, and then you try and follow that bone. You just feel the way through it. But well, you've been working with sea lords. You got it. Go down this side, just follow that bone all the way down there, on that side. Like that? Yep. Beautiful. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I can see you in the su sushi shop, bro. That's it. That's it. Now you've got the bone off now, just pull that gut out. Got a bit of hinu on it, eh? Are you talking about me or <laughs> the tuna? That's up. Cut the head off. I'm going to have a cup of tea. There's another 50 to go. Catch up. Ko te horipi te tuna te mahi nāne, e mahi hau tēnei māku. Well, I didn't manage 50, but I filled it a good dozen eels in about half an hour. Yeah, not bad. Time to put them in Matt's very own custom-built smoker. I've had it possibly over 30 years, this tank. I wouldn't change it because it's just all cured now with all the eels that were smoked in it, all the tar off the wood, and it's got its own taste. You did a good job of that boning out, bro. Well, I had a pretty good teacher. Yeah, yeah. Well, true, true. We've got a nice batch of eels for the smoker, but to have smoke, we must first have fire. So we had to get the fire started, so uh, he asked me to uh, jump on the axe. Oh, bloody hell. You want a chainsaw? <laughs> oh, I thought I was a bit of a uh, lumberjack, but clearly not. Beautiful. That's it, straight into the smokehouse. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, I didn't look too bad, but I reckon I did. That'll just about do us, bro. <laughs> you want to hide that axe? <laughs> OK, man, we'll just um, leave that burning for a while. We'll come back and throw the door on, and off home we go. Sweet. Bye, boy. Bye, boy. Howdy. That's working a treat. Now all we have to do is wait. The eels have been smoking overnight and are ready to come out. Crank it off and see what's happening. Oh, yes. Looking very, very good. The taste. Mm. The tuna tastes beautiful. It's the best part of the tuna. It's the tail. All the fat stick down in the bottom. Beautiful. Good breakfast, eh? Aye. One for you, 
Yeah. Well, hang on. I thought it was two for me, two for you. Hold on, I haven't finished yet. Oh, okay. One for me. I see what's going on here. Oh, another one for me. <laughs> Stop picking all the ones that got a good hinu on it. I'll give you two little ones and might make up. <laughs> Better watch out, I might uh, chuck it on the back of the truck and go. It's all right. Hook it to a number plate. <laughs> <laughs> The eels all smoke now. We've got to get a bit of it back to the house. Our favourite is smoked eel on crackers with black pepper and lemon juice over the top. Beautiful. It's nothing better than being able to put corn on the table. Bring some fresh eggs out. I'm in it. I'm in it. Dig in. Tuna, that's power steak, aioli and smoked deal. Crackers, you'll go crackers over that lot. Bit of fruit off the trees, scampies. And those power fruits you had last night. Dig in. Matt's <laughs> <laughs> experience around tuna is important for the likes of the walkers who can come here, fish the tuna right here. He's had the experience from when he was a kid growing up, and now he's passing it through to his walkers is something that most people want to do. Matt, thank you for having me. It's been uh, very educational, actually. I'll make sure I come back and bring the kids so that they hey, can... Hey, welcome. Welcome. Bring all your kids. I know you've got a hundred around the place, so, <laughs> you know, we, we can get a big bus in here. Oh, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit of a character. Not slow on throwing a few jabs, either. Ko taiki te wā, kia porupora waki tia, a Matt me tona whānau. I nāi ne, e haere ana au ki Marimbara. Te tūtaki e etahi o oku hoa. I'm on a bit of farmland with Jono and Brucey. I got to know last year playing rugby for Whited Up a Bush. He came and joined us last year and he was awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, I said it to you. <laughs> the first time I met him, I was into him straight away. I think that's probably why we hit it off so well and that's why we're still hunting together and spending time together now, you know. The boys and I are going hunting for venison on a block of land owned by Jono's family in Martinborough. It's quite hilly around here, with lots of ridges overlooking open country, which makes it good for long-range rifle hunting. Oh, oh yeah, bro, I got one. <laughs> I got one. Hey, we got one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see it. You see yeah. it over there, coming yeah. up through yeah. that dead scrub. Nice spotting, pal. Yeah. We'll be shooting today on John's 7mm Remington Magnum rifle with the Liminator 3 laser scope. It's a pretty sweet setup, so hopefully I make good use of it. I don't think it'll be spooked. It's just wandered into the bush, so it's going to come back out. Same as this one. If we get around that corner, it'll only be 350 or so, you know. I think uh, Al might be able to get something at 350. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Ideally, we'd like to get into about 100 metres from, but in these bushy conditions, you know, you want to get in a bit closer. It's quite good up there because you can sort of sneak in and then just walk up and over the brow. Hopefully the wind's in our favour. If the wind starts gusting towards the spiker, he'll be able to smell us from a mile off and we'll be busted. Hopefully I don't smell too bad. There's that sort of a rocky ledge thing that we should be able to look out. Of course, over that side and see if that is how the stacks pop back out. Hopefully Powell's uh, going to hit, hit the target. Um, he's been out with us a couple of times and not. It's actually quite nice to actually have a bit of time to make sure that you're stable enough. Oh, yeah, he was steady. Steady. Yeah, he wasn't in a hurry, but that's good. So both making sure that I was comfortable and took my time. Come back in a couple of years' time, eh, and we'll put a bit of pressure on him and speed him up a little bit. All right, Brucey, I get the message. Nice, bro. Boom! Awesome. When it hit the ground, I was actually quite relieved that I, <laughs> I shot it, to be honest. Oh, there's another one. No, no, what about that one over there, bro? Eh? What about the far one? What one? Look at it, it's just sitting there. It's funny, you can sit there and look around, and you think, no, nah, there's nothing here, there's nothing here, but if you wait long enough, you'll see something, and then all of a sudden, you get your eye in, and oh, there's another one, and oh, there's another one. Do you want to wallop another one? Yeah, we. Same one. Oh, on that ridge there, what's that? There's another spiker on the ridge. 
It's a tricky shot, but I'm feeling confident after my first kill. So I line him up. Oh, James. Did you reload? Oh, no. Oh, I <laughs> that was awkward. Oh, well. Take two. That dropped, didn't it? We went too short, actually, if I knocked the second one over. I thought it went forward like it dropped oh, on yeah. its front. Because it wouldn't have... Like, that's almost before the sound and everything. Yeah, it did, eh? It must have dropped, bro. I'm pretty... It wouldn't have moved that bolt. quick. It, it didn't bolt, like it, it just went... Forward. Just before the sound, eh? Yeah, but I don't think it would have dropped. There's a lot of confusion about the second shot, but we're losing light. So the only thing left to do is go and have a look for ourselves. Exactly. E whai a kenei, i rapu mātou i tētai tia. Engari, kei hea te rā atu. Kā tahi, kā periki hoiho i tō Brucey Taha. Oh, there he is. I'm in Martinborough at the bottom of the North Island. I've taken a few shots at a couple of spikers, and with fading light, we've got to find them and make sure they've been successful kills. Oh, there it is. First one there doesn't have to carry, is that the rules? <laughs> no. Watch your step. What if... Shall I go and have a look for that other one, eh? All right. Yeah. We're going to have a, have a track over there. Sweet, bro. Sweet. You right, eh? Yeah, so I just come up. Um, so grab that. All that stuff, put your knife through there, cut through there. Kia mama ake te taumaho o te tia. Me tango hea ngā tero tero me te māhunga i reira tonu. Now for the long walk back. Good. It's getting dark, so we better speed this up. Sweet. How you going, Brucey? Good, mate. Good sporting, bro. Far out. That was hard yakka. I'm not going to lie. I need to go to the gym. Looks like Brucey managed to find the other spiker. It was pretty cool to see it. He dropped it straight away. The bullet had gone right through the heart, actually, which was pretty cool. Won't tell him that. He'll be pretty big headed over that. I think I actually shoot that rifle a lot better than uh, Jono, so you should just <laughs> hand it over. Yeah. Big enough already. I don't think so. Coming out with something, oh, it's a great feeling. It's a successful <laughs> hunt. It's awesome. There's a story comes out of every hunt which makes you want to keep going back, and that's why it's cool taking new people along, because it's a bit of a wow moment, and that doesn't actually leave you. Once you get the little bit of a bug, uh, they want to keep coming back, yeah. Right, yeah, let's go. <laughs> I te rā nei, e haere ana hau ki te whenua o Brucey, ki te kite i tētahi aronga o tona pāki. You're going to teach me something. Brucey owns a large block of land in Martinborough. He pays the mortgage in part by breaking in horses for other farmers. We're down at the horse arena at the moment. The horses are a fairly big part of my life. Every day involves a horse. Generally, it takes him around seven days to fully break in a horse. But this is only day two for this girl, so we've got a bit of work to do. To me, I don't actually work. I'm on holiday every day because I'm doing what I love. You can just keep hold of her. According to Brucey, the key is to slowly increase the physicality of your contact with the horse so she knows she won't be hurt and doesn't spook when you get on. Now, once again, like if she'd have moved around a bit, we'd just keep going until she stops. Yep. You ready? Ooh, there he is. There he is. I was a little bit nervous, I won't lie. I wouldn't say I'm the best man on a horse. Let her know you're there, talk to her. Just having a moment, you know, Jeez, Brucey. Uh, you're girl. quite game, eh? That's good. What are you doing now? All we're doing now is teaching it to steer to the right. It's like a pull and release, so she's going to work out where that's comfortable. Yep. And clearly it's not comfortable going the other way. Sometimes you might build it up to 20 minutes if they need it, but Probably with her, I'll just go about five minutes today. When you see slack in that rain, you'll know she's she's taking notice of it. And what has just happened now is pretty good. She was a good 
we were today anyway. She was compliant, which is the main thing. Ko te wā whakatā mo tēnei hoiho nei, mo te kai hoki i tau atia e kāwea e au i waho atu i te taha o te awa. Fido, pretty proud, eh? Good work, mate. Oh, we've got some uh, venison patties here. What else have we got here? Pork sausages oh, from that right. last pig we got. Yep. Mm. Mm. Mean feed. Got a mushroom and onion sauce with it. <laughs>